Hello, I'm Jim Miller. I'm here with Terrence Moore and Henry House. The flip side starts right now. Welcome to the show. Tonight we are proud to have with us Stacy Crawford. Stacy is the president and CEO of the uh, Community Foundation of Washington County. Stacy, welcome. Thank you for having me. So, you know, I know you, there's some exciting things you do kind of in the public's eye, but there's a lot of exciting things you do behind the scenes as well. So I want to talk about some of those tonight, but can we first go into a little bit about history? What can you tell us about how Washington County uh, Community Foundation started? Sure, so the Community Foundation of Washington County started, we're actually about 21 years old, so 1997. A uh, group of several businessmen at that point in time came mm -hmm. together um, and wanted to put together a community foundation. Community foundations are over 100 years old, but Washington County didn't have one until 1997. So with our first fund of $9,000, we started our community foundation. We sit here today with assets over 55 million. So 21 years, $55 million in assets, and we've given out over $24 million in the past 21 years. So wow. pretty remarkable. That is remarkable. Wow. Terrence. The, um, what are some of the organizations back in 1997 that the Community Foundation went to? Sure, so or, if you think back in that time, you know, of course the YMCA, you know, Always the mission of the Community Foundation is um, to support 501c3, so nonprofits. We also support education and religious institutions. So in general, when you think about what people give to, their philanthropic goals, it typically revolves around those areas that they are most uh, interested in in the community and of course their churches um, and schools. And so back in those, at the beginning, uh, of course, the YMCA was a huge institution in Washington mm -hmm. County and still is today. But always um, we've supported any of the nonprofits that our donors have the affinity for. So we really go upon donor intent. So whatever the donor tells us, um, as long as it's within those parameters of 501c3, education or religion, uh, we'll give to. Now, obviously, that $9,000 didn't morph into the $24 million <laughs> no, that no. went back into the community. No. Uh, so the, if as an individual, I wanted to give to the Community Foundation. Uh, can we just simply give, or do we set up respective charities that we can target, or scholarships that we can do? Can you explain how people can be philanthropic and keep the money within Washington County? Sure, absolutely. So the Community Foundation, we are not a cookie cutter. So we, again, we, I'm gonna say it a million times probably today, donor intent. So you come to me, we have a conversation, and then we can start a fund with as little as $5,000. Um, and that can actually be established over five years. So it's really $1,000 a year. So this is not an organization for the wealthy, the rich. Um, anyone can attain this goal to, to meet their dreams of, of supporting charities. So we sit down and have a conversation and we talk about, is there one organization that you like? Is there a variety of organizations? Is there a field of interest that you like? Um, maybe it's scholarships. And then we figure out what kind of fund that, that your dollars will help support. Now, if we remember, we'll go back, community foundations were established on the idea of endowments, meaning that we only spend a portion of the dollars given to us. So that's how it grows over time. Um, you know, we put in a $5,000 fund. In the first year, it might offset about $250. That's about 5%. Right. And as it grows, as the market hopefully does well, and it grows, um, you, your, your spendable amount goes up. We also, those are more restricted and endowed funds. Now that we are $55 million in assets, we're able to offer non-endowed funds where donors can come and say, you know, I know that every year I give X number of dollars out to organizations. I want to establish a family fund here. You know, it's the, the Miller Family Fund. And next year I'm going to disperse from that. As long as you maintain that $5,000 uh, balance, you can give, let's say you have 20,000, you could give 15,000 the following year, as long as we keep that 5,000. That's more of an accounting kind of thing for us. That's the minimum level. Um, but it's as easy as a conversation with us to get back to your initial question. Uh, you know, what are your goals? What do you wanna do? Um, where do you wanna support? And we can also help be the experts of that. You can come say, tell us the initiatives and we can give you all, hopefully, as much as we know, um, options, but we try and remain as non-biased as possible. So going back to the history thing, mm -hmm. those 
I'll call them paradigm pioneers, even <laughs> though the, the, this existed in other communities. Yeah. Talk to me about their vision, Talk what, that you, what you know of it at least, and talk to me about how they stepped up, how they brought people into the Community Foundation. I mean, I had no idea that it was that little bit of money that started a Community Foundation. That's amazing. Yeah, it is pretty amazing. And so, I mean, some of the names <coughs> that are there, you know, Mr. Watersdorf and Mr. Henson and Mr. Elliott, those are the, the people that came together, Mike Day. Um, and, you know, the thought was really, establishing longevity and perpetuity of funds to support the community. So that back to that endowment kind of option of, you know, if you put money, this is gonna grow over time and be there long after any of those men are here or even I'm sitting here, that's gonna grow and continue to put out into Washington County. So the Waldersdorf Trust, and Mr. Waldersdorf yes. has long since passed, yes. but it's he is still yes. having impact. Absolutely, and he had a huge impact. Mr. Watersurf and Mr. Henson back in 2010 put a challenge out to the community. So at that point we were, you know, in our teenage years, um, and they matched dollars for agencies. And so we have several funds that are established at the Community Foundation that support agencies who took that match money and raised money, um, and now they have unrestricted operating dollars coming to them every year. Based on what you know about the history and where you are today, what do you think the biggest unexpected change was? In other words, how did how, did the organization grow in, grow in ways that you didn't expect it, or has it morphed into something bigger, better? Well, I think we're still growing. So quite honestly, I think there's a lot of opportunity um, as we go into the next, as we start to talk about family giving and the generation that established the Community Foundation starts to age, you know, they've passed that on and we're, our hopes are that their gen, the next generation down, their sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters um, will continue that philanthropic uh, feeling in, in Washington County. And so that's where we're looking to grow. I know that, you know, initially, the thought was a lot of um, the larger businessmen and businesswomen in the community establishing funds, but where I think it's most interesting is that we have a lot of funds now from just regular middle class families that come to us and have a goal to be philanthropic and they start a fund and then they can realize that. A lot of scholarships are started that way. Um, our scholarship program has gone, grown tremendously and that wasn't an initial goal of those uh, those men that started this. Um, but, you know, pursuing post-secondary education in our community is a tough hurdle for a lot of people. And our scholarships have grown. We have, uh, we give out over $110,000 every year in scholarships specifically for Washington County students. There is no substitution for the time value of increasing money. It's putting it away, <laughs> letting it grow, yeah. those types of things. Yes. How do you get that message out? Because there's some benefit actually to it, and, and that's managing that money and managing your, your, your charitable giving. So mm -hmm. how do you get that message out to those middle class families yeah. and their benefit? Yeah, it's a great question, Terrence, and we, we struggle with that, you know, because I think that there is that idea of it's only for, you know, the Bill Gates of the community. <laughs> it's the big money, but it really isn't. So we, we try and work hand in hand a lot with our professional advisors and accountants in the, in the area. But again, with technology now, a lot of people use TurboTax, right? You don't go see your CPA. And so it's, it's really about marketing um, and getting it out there. So uh, some of the things that we've done, obviously, are just general outreach like this. Things like this is a great opportunity for people to hear the message. Um, you know, we've really changed kind of our look in the past year on, on things that are going out print-wise and our social media. And so we're getting a lot of opportunity there. And we rely on our agencies to tell their donors. Because while we're here to help the agencies and the nonprofits in the community, we, they are their own advocates, right? They have all of their own major givers that give, and if they can get the message out to those givers about establishing endowments that'll support them long into the future, they don't have to be the ones managing those dollars. Right. You know, so we can handle that um, for them. And so that's been a, a thing that we've been really trying to push and work on, as well as our agency boards that are around here to understand the value of establishing a fund at the Community Foundation that could be for unrestricted dollars for, for years to come. And I think that's a, that's a great point because, you know, I serve on a, no, a number of boards for nonprofits and very few use the foundation to their benefit. Yeah. And, and they, they do try to do so much in-house and they're not, it's, a res, it's a wasted resource. Sure. And I think it's, they'll, they'll see a lot of benefit by, by using the foundation. And they don't get that message out yeah. to the clients, to the donors, as much as they should. Yeah. Yep. Now, over the, the years, I th earlier you said about you were hoping for a 5% return. Yeah. Um, 
how do you try to get that 5%? <laughs> because, uh, I mean, if, if, if you read the newspaper this week mm -hmm. and we've been up and we've been down yeah. and all around, and I know it's a long-term plan. So if I put $5,000 into the Community Foundation and we want a 5% return on it, not every year am I going to see 5%. Some years I may see two and a half and some years I may see 10. Sure. Uh, so how do, we, how do you budget that, you know, oh, I want to give, you know, Five hundred dollars a year back into the community mm -hmm. off of uh, off of my investment. How how do you budget that? Yep. So it's just like managing your own personal portfolio. We ride the wave just like all of you do. And so, yes, you're right. There's years we don't meet that hurdle. We uh, that we don't. But what we've done is when we calculate the spendable, which is five percent every year, we calculate it over the last twenty rolling quarters. And so it's a point in time, 20 points in time, that average is the spendable. So we take the ebbs and flows of the market. Uh, we are you know, invested in a portfolio that is low risk with some growth. I mean, obviously we want to ride that risk. Yeah, I didn't think you were a high risk. No, <laughs> uh, yeah. no, we're not. But we also are realistic, and it's one of the conversations we have with every donor that comes in, that they have to understand that you know, we're going we're to ride that wave just like you are with your personal portfolio. Um, and there's times that, let's say, Henry, that you had a fund and you wanted to give out 500, but this year the spendable was only 485. So then we'll say, okay, the spendable's 485. You can write a check for $15. We'll add it to that spendable. We don't put it into your principal. Right. And then we spend out that 500. So there's ways around it all. Um, but again, our biggest thing is trying not to touch that principal and, and keeping that uh, investment growing, so. And let me do a quick follow-up. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Community Foundation, you know, HCC, which I think you're familiar yeah. with, they, they, ha they have fundraising tentacles. Uh, you also have that with the Washington County Hospital mm -hmm. Foundation or Meritus. Yes. Uh, how is your program, can you explain the advantages of being involved with the Community Foundation over Sure. programs such as that. Sure, absolutely. So we do not want to compete with any of our, although we're a nonprofit, we don't compete. We're here to support those nonprofits. So the college, the hospital, Boys and Girls Club, any of the, name any 501c3, we're here to support. So the difference is what we do for donors is when a donor comes, you know, we're able to kind of parcel that out to a variety. And so if you want to give to the hospital or you want to give to HCC, that's what you should do philanthropically. But let's say you want to say, I want to know that for the next however many years, I'm going to be giving this amount of dollars. You can establish that endowment with us and that goes out. So it's a little bit different. There are some tax benefits that community foundations offer that single source kind of nonprofits don't. Okay. Um, those endowment based kinds of, of tax credits for one is called the Maryland, uh, Endow Maryland credit, and that's a 25% credit uh, right off the top. So if you give $5,000, it's a $1,250 credit on your taxes if you give to an endowment. That's, okay. And there are a limited number of those. Um, there's also some benefit to donors who come. Let's say you establish a donor advised fund. You can package, let's say you have a great year in your business and you want to give all of that to a donor advised fund, but you're not really ready to parcel it out to the individual nonprofits yet that year. You can kind of package it in. Um, so we offer some different things, but we are by no means a, um, you know, a competitor. We don't want to compete. My goal and my overwhelming goal for, for our community foundation is to help those nonprofits, like Terrence alluded to, to understand how they can use us to benefit their long-term operations and sustainability. So we have very few funds at the Community Foundation that actually benefit the Community Foundation. We have some that benefit what we call responsive grants, which are the most immediate needs of the community. Our board members decide on them every year. But most of our funds are designated out to other nonprofits. And that's what we're here to be, is sure. a partner. Stay with us. Uh, we're going to take a break right now and pay some bills. When we come back, uh, we'll have more about the Community Foundation of Washington County. We're back with the uh, president and CEO of the uh, Washington County Community Foundation. Stacy, thanks again for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about accountability. Um, we talked about investments in the last segment. Obviously, there, you have investment policies. Can you talk to us about the financial accountability that you have for the donors that are establishing and maintaining these funds? 
Absolutely. So um, our donor, we're invested. We have an investment manager that um, abides by our investment policy statement, which the board sets. And we already talked about our spendable uh, in the last segment. But um, aside from that, when a donor establishes, they are able to see exactly every dividend returned, every investment income returned or lost, if it's a year of, like Henry referenced before, uh, any distributions or withdrawals as far as uh, any contributions. And so we have a, a software, uh, as everyone seems to have, that handles all of those accounting. And so um, in addition to that, you know, we go through an annual full audit um, of our books. And so there's a lot of accountability. But it's one thing we say we really enjoy when donors are uh, very active in their fund. And so uh, we do provide monthly statements if they want or quarterly, however long, they, however many they want. Um, and then many of our donors will utilize, you know, they'll use their fund to, to almost um, you know, have money coming in, let's say it's your birthday and you don't need another pair of socks or a tie, you know, so their son or daughter might send something in as a gift to their fund. Um, and so we do a lot of uh, thank yous out and things like that. So lots of accountability. Excellent. Terrence? Mm -hmm. um, accountability is great. Um, involvement is even better, it's even good to hear that they, yeah. they can stay engaged. Yeah. But how annoying does that get? <laughs> Let's be honest. How, how many times do they you get that nervous person who's watching the market, who's oh. calling down, who's saying, what's going on? I need to move things around. And how, how demanding is that on you? Well, so I will tell you that March 23rd of 2020 was <laughs> yeah, awful, right. was horrible. But I will say I think we have a lot of uh, really smart donors that understand, you know, again, riding out that long term. And so while, while I get what you're saying, <laughs> I think that, that we have some buy-in to what we're doing, right. and so you know we want them to feel comfortable. I want to answer their questions. Again, their assets are with us, and, and hopefully they're meet, we're meeting their goals. And uh, So I don't want to relive last March, if that's your question. Right. I didn't want to answer the phone, <laughs> um, but we did. And I am very, very confident in our board's direction. Our investment uh, committee is made up of some brilliant minds in this area, um, and as well as Mason and RBC, um, and, and uh, Family Heritage Trust who have uh, portions of our portfolio. Okay, um, call, the m amount of money that you reinvest in the community, mm -hmm. how does that compare to your cost of operations? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, because people, you know, you look at it and it's like, well, you know, XYZ, you know, nonprofit, is only returning 35% yep. of what they're taking in. Can you tell me how, what, how your efficiencies are? Yeah, nine cents on the dollar. Nine cents on the dollar. Yep. Okay. Now, is, yep. That on the, is that on the return dollar? Nope, that's so, it costs, our, our annual operating budget um, outside of events that we run, um, right. so our, our general events, is less than a half a million dollars. Okay. And so to, to raise a dollar, basically, or just put a dollar out, it's basically about nine cents that we, that we charge. So it's pretty thrifty. It's pretty thrifty. So we do charge people say, well how do you make your money? If funds don't come back to you that are designated, we charge a percent on top of every fund or a percent and a half if it's, if it's a scholarship or a field of interest fund, meaning we have to go out and find grantees. Um, so when we have to meet a hurdle, we talked about five percent, we're really looking somewhere north of seven to eight percent that we're meeting that hurdle in, in the return every year because okay. we're meeting the five percent, our percent, and then um, our investment uh, fee as far as our managers, so, which is about 60 basis points. Understood. Yeah. Interesting. So historically, what has been your ROI, your return on investment? Is there, a, is there an all up number or? <sighs> I, well, That's probably a hard question. Yeah, it's a it? hard question. I mean, again, we've put, I, if we say just in our endowment, we've put back $24 million into the community. Um, you know, but our, our budget has changed considerably over time. We've mm -hmm. gone from, and many people will remember, you know, a one person shop, you know, to two, to now we have three and a half employees okay. still um, to, to manage that, the processes. But, you know, I, I think our return is, is wonderful. I think that we can say we probably have one of the lowest costs to raise a dollar back into the community. I would certainly be hard pressed to find somebody that was less than nine, yeah. nine cents. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's good. Can I ask one more question sure. relative to accountability? So um, a person, let's say somebody uh, supports ABC organization that does whatever service. Um, they pass away, mm -hmm. the fund continues to give to ABC organization. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, ABC organization goes away. Mm -hmm. What happens? 
Yes. Great, great question. Uh, so we have what's termed in every agreement variance power. And so what variance power means is if, it, just as you're referencing, an organization ceases to exist or falls out of IRS compliance, um, we monitor all of that, then the board will attempt to meet the donor intent of that fund. So let me give you an example, and you guys will remember this. Several years ago, Food Resources was mm -hmm. in Washington County. We had funds that supported Food Resources. Donors were no longer alive to talk to. Obviously, our first step would be talk to a talk donor. To the donor. Donors mm -hmm. no longer okay. alive to talk to. What do we do with those food resources designated funds? Uh, so what the board did was looked out and said, okay, HARC does food pantries. Western Maryland, Maryland Food Bank, the Western Maryland branch also does. And so many of those funds were then put into that. If we can't find something, then the clause says that it will go to what is termed a community fund, and those are what fuel our responsive grants, which are the most immediate needs of the community, and they're vetted by the board every year. And would that be the same if someone is managing their fund on a, and it's not necessarily meant to be after their death, but it, yep. it turns out being that way? Yeah. Same thing happens there? Same thing. So we're so that's part of being active. We try and have a succession plan for everybody who's actively managing the intent of the fund right now. So we have conversations with them about what happens as they age. Now, obviously, something could happen suddenly and we might not have that. We're going to try and manage whatever the intent was while they were living. Um, but, you know, most of the time we have succession plans set up with everybody on their funds. Okay, so they can actually decide in advance. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it may not even get to the point nope. where, you, wow. And they can name <coughs> a successor advisor. And that's part of that intrigue of, of establishing family funds that, you know, you can pass that fund on to the next generation right. to be the advisors of the fund. And you've committed that it's not going to be taken out and used for something you right. don't want it to be. It can be within this area, but find the best. Correct. Wow. Correct. Yes. That's great. Yes. Interesting. And, and I think that's one of the amazing things I've learned about the fund, how, how diverse you are. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I hate to bring a march again of last year, but, you Here know, <laughs> but no, but I, I want to commend you because um, working for a number of nonprofits and, and running a nonprofit myself, the community foundation stepped up in a way in a community that I've never seen. Yeah. When I'm sure when the phones were ringing, you, you were coming up with a solution. And when everybody else was clo clutching their purse, it, shutting their wallets, or closing their hands, you opened up and you gave probably more to the community than anyone else did in the community during that time and put in the hours of constantly being online and asking for donors. How did that pivot come about? Like, how did that decision went? I'm sure everyone else was like, stop, don't move, yeah. and you ran forward oh. into the burning building, so. It's what we do, and I'll tell you, I couldn't, we couldn't have done that without our partners at the United Way. So there was this day that I think Heather and I both said, what are we gonna do? Well, we've gotta do something, right? That everybody's looking to us, we're the grantors here in this community. Um, and we knew that the United Way had the knowledge of what's going on you know, boots on the ground kind of things. Whereas we, you know, we're driven by our donors. And so donors call, we make sure everything checks all the boxes and we send the checks. We don't get to see what's really going on. So that marriage happened pretty seamlessly and pretty quickly. Um, and what we had was access to funds. You know, we have a donor pool that was ready to give, you know, that, that was op had opened their wallets. And so it was an amazing marriage. I, we take, you know, it's it was a complete, partnership there and so um, but it was great it for me and for my staff it was a wonderful time to see what's going on because we we hear but we don't get to get out as much as we'd love to and so being out handing out those checks and watching what was happening in the community and watching Washington County give I think it was 48 hours and we had a hundred thousand dollars in matching dollars um, and then the community just opened up and so uh, we were really thankful that we were here and able to do that. Um, and it, it just really drove home to us how hard our nonprofits are working. Now, the funds that you distribute, mm -hmm. where is the accountability? How do you gauge that? Do you have a, a, a review board after the money goes out and say, well, did you spend this money for X, Y, sure. or Z? If it's a scholarship, uh, is that check cut directly to the institution? How, how is that managed? Man, you guys have good questions. So if um, it's a donor, if a donor is telling us, send it to the ARC, and we're sending it there without any restrictions, we're not checking on it okay. after. It's going to the ARC, they're you know, a good with the IRS, they're approved 501c3. If it's a grant that we're sending out or a donor says send it uh, for a specific program, then yes, we follow up with that. With our responsive grants uh, that are sent out, then we do also uh, a grant report. 
Same with the COVID funds that went out. There was a grant report that came back. Scholarships are an interesting thing. So we never cut a check to a person. Every scholarship goes to the college. And so what the student receives when you see them standing up and getting their envelope at graduation is a letter that says, send us your bill, make sure your student ID is on it, and we're gonna send that check directly to your institution, and then we're gonna make sure it's there and cleared before you start school. And so that's how that goes. So, okay. so students do have some accountability to have to say, you have to send us that, that document right. um, to get it out. Uh, but Sarah in our office does a great job following up with everybody, making sure it's getting to the right finance office at the right school. And again, that's another checks and balance for us because we can make sure those are accredited schools that our donors' money is going where it should be, that it's not going into the maybe the hands of a student who might forget to pay that bill. Um, it's going directly to an institution. Okay. And how do you balance that accountability with efficiency at the same time? Because there may be. Say, yeah. <laughs> My next like point was going to be one and a half percent sounds really cheap <laughs> sure. for all that they have to do. Right. And she said, you know, if you tell me to send it to the ARC, I'm going to send it to the ARC, no questions asked, except we check and make sure that they're IRS. <laughs> and, and she had two or three other things. Well, except, you know, it's lovely because there's a nice uh, website called GuideStar that tells you if nonprofits are approved. Right. So we back end check all that. Um, and, you know. But the point is, you're doing that due are. diligence on behalf. Yes. of the donor yes. and you know that's part of the problem we how many calls do we all get to give money give money give money and you have no idea where you're sending the money I always use and I'm not trying to pick on these people but there is a, a, uh, a clothes collection boxes out in our community that's not Goodwill right. that if you look at Goodwill they do what 75 80 whatever percent mm -hmm. back to the clients mm -hmm. these give guys give like three so out of every dollar, they keep 97 cents and give 3% mm -hmm. to charity. That's not where I want my stuff to go, you know? Right. And I don't think anybody else does either. And what I'm hearing from you is you do all of that due diligence on the back end. Yes, we do. We do. And that's why it's, you know, really important for us to try and get that message out of what we can do for you as a family, as a donor, as a fund. Um, you know, it, it does take a lot of headaches yeah. away from, and it also takes headaches out of, you write one check every year to put right. into your fund, and then we distribute it out as you see fit and, and tell us, and you're only getting one thank you note to send to your, or one IRS note to send to your accountant, as opposed to gathering all your different, you know, charitable deductions that yeah. are, you know, $100 at a time, so. One and a half percent is cheap. It is. We think it's cheap, but you know what? Our board is committed, much like that 5%. Many of our community foundation uh, partners around the co uh, country are changing their spendable. We're committed to that. We can, we've, we're meeting it now, and that's what we want. The intent is to get the dollars back out, not hold on to them. Uh, we want to make sure that we're helping the community. Are there funds that go towards funding your administrative costs? We do have some what we term founders funds. Mm -hmm. And if you look at them in things like our impact, you'll know every name on there. They're made up of many of those, top, those first uh, people that founded the Community Foundation. <coughs> um, but one thing that we really are going to start talking about are those unrestricted dollars that the community needs. Because you know what? Every year Things something happen. happens. COVID. Yep. Mm -hmm. COVID happens. Yeah. Yep. And to be able to have something and be able to help would be a wonderful thing for us. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a break right now. Uh, we will be back with more questions uh, for the Community Foundation. Stay with us. We're back with Stacy Crawford from the Community Foundation of Washington County. Stacy, let's talk about funds, let's talk about types of funds, but before I talk about how to establish a fund, let's talk about um, diversity of funds. Let's talk about um, if I want to, let's say that I don't want to start a fund, but I want to support animals. I want to, I want to put money in every year. Are there just general funds out there that I can say, hey Stacy, here's a thousand bucks, put this in the in the pot and off we go absolutely so there there's all of our funds are listed on our website we can get them to you in print anytime and most of them you'll be able to tell by what they are uh, what their name is what they're supporting or else you can call and ask us and we'll tell you the list of funds that we have so typically when you would give to something that wouldn't be like a family fund it would be what we term a designated right fund. no I get it so you could call and say hey what designated funds do you have to go out to um, 
you know, let's say Pet Boys and Girls Club, Boys or and Girls, wherever right. it might be. Girls Incorporated. Yep, we can give you the list, and then you can choose to make a, a gift to that fund, and and know that that's going to be, um, you know, going to grow that fund to be. Sent now, out. how does that impact me as a donor from a tax perspective? Sure. So your your taxes, you're going to get the same. You're going to get a tax receipt. We're a 501c3, so it's fully charitable. So if you okay. give me a thousand dollars. One of so the other things we do is give all those letters out. Yeah. That one and a half percent. <laughs> yeah, one and a half percent. <laughs> one percent in some cases. Yes, one percent for designated. Yeah. So, um, so you'll get the charitable deduction letter from us with all the standard language that you need. And then when you reference diversity of funds, it is really important to know that we have funds that range from, I'm going to tell you, we have funds just to support the feral cat population in Washington County or... <laughs> help to not support them, you know? <laughs> all the way up to elder care, to arts, to music. We have specific funds. Um, some of the neat new funds that we have support students who are in, I will say, extracurricular activities, specifically in the art, with supplies. Because guess what? Scholarships, you know, kids can come buy them, but when you go to art school, guess what else you have to buy? You have to buy everything that goes with it. Or when you go to dance school, you have to take an extra dance lesson or a voice lesson. So we have several funds that support those kinds of initiatives, which I think are pretty neat. Um, we also have some funds that are called field of interest funds that support things like uh, prom dress, things, things that are outside of the cost that you normally think. And so when we survey the community and we see what the needs are, you know, we think about education and we think about health care and we think about feeding people and those kind of things, but there are lots of other things that impede your quality of life. And so one of the funds that was recently started um, was in memory of a young lady who uh, was an Antietam Academy student. And her teachers and family got together and established a fund called Tootie's Tokens. And that's going to support those auxiliary costs to just have a great life as a student. You want to go to prom, but you can't afford to get your hair cut. We're going to help pay that vendor to make sure that you're going to get your prom dress or you're getting your hair cut. Or let's say you um, need to take driver's ed, right? But you can't afford. Driver's ed's not a cheap thing anymore, right? We don't go to the basement of the bucks. school. Yeah. Yep. So those kinds of things. It's really an interesting diversity that we have. Again, all back to that donor intent. You have the idea. We try and make it fit into something that we can do. Okay. And, and that's why it's so important. And you, you bring up Tootie. I, I knew Tootie. I, I tutored her before she was unfortunately murdered. Um, and to, to know that the community was impacted by that, <coughs> and to know the community foundation stepped in and it was a resource. Yeah. And it wasn't millions of dollars poured in. Right. It, it was the 10 to $25 of money, T-shirts. and Gathering money in the community can really contribute into you know, a smaller segment of the community and rally over this young lady. And I also went to art school and I know about access. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point as well, that you go to the schools and it, you, great, you get into the school, but how do you stay there? Yeah. How do you sustain that? So um, now that you see that happen in the community, do you see your operation costs, you know, your staff, you know, are, are you, are you going to be ramping up here sometime soon? I, I know the, I know the floodgates are open and I, I know you got a lot of notoriety over the last year as well. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for the organization? Yeah, we've had some really good co uh, conversations. And so right now with the software and the things that we have that are supporting the people doing the work, um, we feel pretty <coughs> confident with our three and a half people that we have right now, but we do know that that's going to come in, and in the coming years, the next five years or so, we'll probably need to add. As our scholarships grow, we're going to need to break those off and, you know, have somebody more managing those. Um, so we're, we're watching that. You know, we feel really good about where we are operationally right now. Um, but we're invested in downtown. We have our location right downtown, and it, it has the capability for us to grow. Our budget has the capability for us to grow. But again, we don't want to grow just for the sake of growing because, again, we don't want to have to up our fees. We want to keep as low as we can and so we're committed um, you know to stretch as far as we can um, and we feel pretty good again with where we are right now we added on we did add on a full-time marketing and communications director Tim Luper Speck last year and so that's been a huge help because again it's getting that word out changing the look of things making people aware and so right now we feel pretty good check with me next year <laughs> <laughs> um, you know social media has mm -hmm. oh well so-and-so's birthday's coming up. Uh, give towards uh, making sure that every dog has food in their dish uh, at XYZ. And, you know, that's great. Yeah. 
But how has that impacted your 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 fundraising? Because if let's say I put the you know fill the dog dish there, but I set it up as a community foundation, so I I do that initial five thousand dollar buy. Mm -hmm. Now every year for my birthday or my wife's birthday or whoever, I can advertise it, okay. and it can help sustain that fund and grow that fund in addition to your work. Yep. Uh, do you have many people? doing that and can you explain what is the process to sure okay sure so yes yeah, so th obviously you know the the uh, Facebook fundraisers and all those things that you see out there they can be funneled to your local charity and so we because we are a nonprofit ourselves you can funnel it right to us and we have several donors a lot of our scholarships especially our memorial scholarships that are established when someone passes away uh, you know many of our younger uh, uh, citizens um, their parents will do things like that um, our local mailman Harry Jones many of you know Harry he's mm -hmm. one of our favorite downtown Harry does that for his birthday and he's working on getting his fund for a scholarship to support students up to the five thousand okay. dollars and so you know it's it's all about communicating what I say is if you're gonna do that let us know because those Facebook checks come and they don't have a whole lot of information on them so we have to do some digging right. on event right. numbers and things like that but yeah, we can certainly work with you on social media. And one thing that we provide is that social media. So if you have a fund with us and you've got something going on for your fund, we're happy to push it out. And we have a pretty good reach right now with our social media and our marketing. So, so if, if Jim decides he's going to do the Miller Family Foundation, mm -hmm. then he, you know, and I think apparently uh, rescue pets are a, a big deal for you. Is that sure? Okay. Why so, not? Yeah. So you know. Every time one of his kids have a bir has a birthday, Jim has a birthday, Jim has a, oh, he loves Monday, so that's a way that Jim could bolster his ranks, Yep, right? okay. he just lets us know, we'll help push it out, Jim's favorite day is Monday, give to his fund. <laughs> 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 to support rescue animals. <laughs> That's how I found, the, found out about the feral cats, because um, I think that just came out of my Are social media pro? feed. Or yeah. Yeah, yeah, the cats. Team Meyer fund. I, right, I said, I said it, it just came out, but it was an it, it was an awareness mm -hmm. opportunity. And w a lot of times towards the end of the school year, I get a lot of parents who reach out to me and say, hey, do you know about any scholarships? Yeah. And it's e so easy for me now to say, go to Community Foundation. Yeah. You know, I send them right to the website. All the scholarships are listed. They can apply. It gives the criteria. And it was something that, I recently learned about and a lot of these parents aren't aware of. Yeah, absolutely. So is there some working with the school system a little bit more to get that awareness out into these kids as yeah, well? Yeah, there is. And so we have a really great partnership with the school system and, and the counselors, um, but they only have so much time too mm -hmm. in a right. day. So so um, there was, we used to host a site called WashingtonCountyScholarships.org, uh, but the school system and the community foundation decided we moved away from that because the school system's using Naviance right now, and that's their college search engine and scholarship search engine. So we have all that information funneled into there. But on our part, we've decided to do a couple extra things, which is I hope what you've seen is now we have an availability for parents to go on and say, make sure you alert me when mm -hmm. the scholarships, much like alert me when my son has a baseball game or a soccer game, alert me when scholarships are out. And so that's available on the website. And we also are working hand in hand with, the, um, with WCPS and our local colleges, so HCC and University System of Maryland, to make sure we're out at their college fairs um, and then out at any of their opportunities. The guidance counselors do a great job helping us out, but again, you know, it, we can only tell them so much. The student has to get on and actually apply. Absolutely. And that seems to be where a little bit of the disconnect. We wish we could get in and sit down with every kid and say, all right, let's do it together. But yeah. that would way jack up the 1%. <laughs> so we need to take one more break, and we don't have a lot of time when we come back. But uh, if you'll stick around for sure. one, more, one more segment, stay with us. We'll back, we're back with Stacy Crawford after these messages. Welcome back. Once again, we're here with Stacy Crawford from the Community Foundation of Washington County. Stacy, two quick subjects I'd like to hit on this time. First of all, um, special events. We talked a little bit about the partnership with the United Way. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't talk about the People's Choice Awards, which I want to hear more about. Um, second thing, though, is you know we've talked about uh, the donors and we've we've listed a number of things that you do for them on their behalf. Some of the benefits. 
in other words, the question, why the community foundation? You know, easy to get into, mm -hmm. we, we do some of the legwork for you, tax deductibility, all of that. Is there anything we've missed in that list? I just think it's the breadth of what we do, and so the ability to really take what you have and spread it to all of the things that you, you like in the community, um, and our general expertise of the, of the nonprofits in the area. And so we're really trying to make sure we understand what they're doing, we can best match donors. So, it, but, but is, to, that, to that end, if I decide to do the feral cat or whatever you said <laughs> fun, um, but then next week I wanna, I wanna change that and do the, the dog, rescue dog yeah. can i do that with yeah them? so we are completely amendable it's as okay. much as and and we say that often too to our donors who are setting up legacy gifts and so thinking about afterlife so right now that might be what you like but 10 years from now when you're alive still yeah. you can come and change that um, add subtract move around without going to your estate planner and paying them the 200 dollars an hour you just come to the community foundation we change your agreement and a couple signatures, make sure every, all the checks are, or boxes are checked and we're good to go. So a lot of uh, flexibility. All right, Terrence? I, I just wanna say thank you. <laughs> I really don't have another question. Um, um, I, I serve on a lot of nonprofit boards, as I said, and, and I just wanna thank you for the work that you do in the community and I, I'll do my best to continue to get the word out and thank get you. the support for you. So I appreciate looking that. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Community Foundation does such a great job, but what can the community do to help the foundation do better? It's again, understanding what we do and how we can help you uh, as a community and how the community can rally together. So again, if you sit on a board, it is so important to talk to your, your nonprofit that you're a board member or volunteer with about sustainability. And that that's where the community foundation can help you. We can help rally together donors. Let's think if every, every nonprofit said, you know, I have a $10,000 major donor. Next year, we're gonna take five of that and establish an endowment, right? then that's there for longevity, mm -hmm. you know? Can, and and, and we could, if we could do that and get momentum, then 30 years from now when none of us are sitting around, well, maybe we are still sitting around <laughs> the table, but let's say 100 years from now when we're not here, our nonprofits are still surviving, right? The next time there's a COVID issue or a pandemic, they have unrestricted operating dollars that are coming to them annually. Now, a slight difference in the United Way, they, they allow for payroll deductions, mm -hmm. uh, is that, an option with the yeah, community foundation? We don't get into the payroll deductions, okay. but we what we do do is recurring gifts. And so you can set up a recurring credit card gift on our website to any fund or to your fund. Okay. Um, and it can come out as much as I think it's weekly, um, but at least monthly. Well, and the reality is if you're on a if you're on a payroll if your company's on a payroll processor like ADP or Paychex or one of those, you can send money wherever you want as a deduction. So you could do a payroll deduction, it's just gonna be managed by your company not by right. the community foundation which is actually cheaper for you because you don't have to pay the transaction costs. Correct. So we've talked about a lot of work um, and work is great. What's better than work though is success and you have a lot of that too. You've already mentioned one thing mm -hmm. which is the 24 million dollars. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned that you went from what was it 9,000 yeah, to, 55, to million. 55 million. That's larger than some small banks <laughs> in terms of asset managed. Um, Talk to us about two other things. You mentioned quickly the United Way partnership. What were the results of that? And number two, People's Choice Awards. What is that all about and why should we, why should we be interested in that? Sure. So the United Way partnership that we talked about, COVID, that was over 300,000 of cash, cash wow. in hand. That's <laughs> not, and that doesn't include all of the food and the things that were coming in kind sponsor or in kind uh, donations that uh, Heather and her team managed through. So well over half a million dollars in about a 30 to 45 day time period when things were really bleak uh, back in April and May of last year. Um, so that was just amazing. I, as amazing as it is, I hope we never have to do it again, but I miss my friends at the United Way because we spent every day together. And so it's been almost different. We're just right across the alley, but uh, Heather and I are often like, oh man, you know, <laughs> yeah. but we don't want another pandemic, but we enjoy our, our partnership. PCA, so People's Choice Awards, and, uh, Awards is an annual event that the Community Foundation does. And we honor three volunteers in um, Washington County and one rising star which is a young philanthropist so 40 and under someone who is 
you know, serving on a board, getting into their community. And those are all nomination based. Those nominations will start here in September, so you'll want to watch our website for that. The winners of those three volunteer uh, of, the, of the year awards, they get a $5,000 endowment for the charity of their choice. And so uh, last year, uh, Carol Laurie was one of our winners and she established for uh, the Family Center. I mean, we've just had a plethora. We had a fire department, so it's just a, a lot. So if you're on a board, if you're working with somebody, if you have a family member that's a volunteer that's getting to, out there um, and supporting nonprofits, you know, please nominate them. They'll be, it's a very quick nomination. If you know somebody that's under 40 that you can just see that they have so much potential and they're getting out in the community, nominate them. Their award is actually $1,000 that goes into um, our Young Philanthropist Fund that wow. supports uh, a startup kinds of projects in the community. Wow, okay, so. great. Last questions, Terrence. It, just think about that. Have you had any past winners kind of carry that on past that, that their, their win? Yeah, we sure have. We ha we've had plenty of, of young philanthropists that continue to come back and serve um, in the community. You know, the, obviously their dollars, they come back and they judge for us on their startups. So, um, and many of the, their, this is, that's a, one of our newer programs. So I think we're up to, this is probably our sixth year for that. You can catch me off guard on that number. I might be wrong. So I think we have lots to see in the future from those. Uh, any other community events besides the Whew. People's Choice? Not right now. We just got done with the Washington County Gives. That, okay. <laughs> so we're still breathing from that. Um, and so that'll happen next May again, and we're well, that, really excited. We didn't even talk about that Yeah, one. that so was $1.1 million this past fiscal year. We can year. call that a success. That was huge. In, wait a minute, this fi past fiscal year. Yeah, so we did it in September because we postponed it from last May. Right. And then we did it again in May. But $1.1 million straight in to one year. Not wow. a dime comes to the Community Foundation. We wow. put it right out back to them to 87 different nonprofits. How did we forget that one? That's, That's all right. Great. It's a big one. We'll be back next year to talk. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all right. That's all the time we have tonight. We hope you will like us on Facebook. We hope you will follow us on Twitter. We hope you'll send us your comments and suggestions to feedback at theflipsidetv.com. That's feedback at theflipsidetv.com. Most importantly, join us next week for another visit to the Flipside. Good night.